welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to paint a Cavalite Warrior from the Caval of the Black Heart. Uh, I believe that's the name. Uh, this is the regular color scheme that you see on the boxes and uh, on the site and uh, the most popular color scheme. And the hardest part on this miniature for me was figure out what to paint first uh, and I'm going to share with you how I do it. I hope you find this video helpful and if you like it don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel to see more videos. I'm going to start by priming the model in black and I'm going to use Rust-Oleum black primer. I would recommend you really using black because uh, we're going to start with a very dark base and black goes very well with this color. I'm going to use Incubike darkness and I'm going to give the whole model a coat of this color. Of course you're aiming for all of the panels and uh, armor pieces on this miniature. Uh, make sure to thin down the color a little bit and it's a little bit hard to cover. I don't know if it's my paint or it's all of the green paints that are like this, but I needed a couple coats and that's it. Next I'm going to use Lead Belcher and after this I'm going to start painting all of the places that I want to be silver. I find this is the right time to do it because uh, some of the places are like in the gun barrel. You have to paint the little um, hole where the silver shows in between the black. So this is a good time to start painting the silvers. Next, after that, I'm going to use just model color black and I'm going to start coloring all the places that I want to be black. These include the, the gloves, the gun barrel, um, the feet and all the places that are not armored. And uh, make sure to thin down the paint again. Just make sure to not use paint straight out of the bottle. And I'm using a size 2 brush uh, just to very easily uh, block all of these places with the color they're supposed to be. Bugman's Glow, I'm going to use this to paint all of the flayed skin around the model. And I have to say this is the, my favorite part of painting Dark Eldar, playing, painting the flayed skin. It's so much fun and it always looks so cool, I don't know why. Here I'm using a fine detail brush just to make sure to only paint those places and not paint on the other parts. Rhinox Hide, I'm going to use it to paint all of the little places that are going to be uh, brown, which is the, the knife, and little pouches here and there, it's just the little places. Balthazar Gold, I'm going to use it to base coat all of the places that I want to be gold, which includes uh, this little ball in, in the gun and decor decorative uh, places here and there. I'm using a fine detail brush because these places are very small and I want to make sure that I only paint what I, paint what I want and uh, being very careful about it not to paint on, on the other places. Uh, the last thing is sandry dust and this is to paint all of the bone. I'm just going to uh, base coat all these places real quick. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and wash the model. Uh, most of the model is going to be washed in known oil, but it's only going to be the the armor, the silver, and I think that's it. But most of the the, uh, the miniature is going to be uh, washed in black. Uh, you could go in and use a small detail brush to uh, only wash the recesses. But I think because it has so many edges and so many crevices, I think it's about the same thing as, as if you went in and only washed the recesses as if you just washed the whole thing and then clean up. And uh, with uh, this is uh, Reclam Flesh Shade, I'm shading the flesh, I mean the, the flayed flesh. And with Agrat's Earth Shade, I'm going to shade in the gold. I'm using a fine detail brush just to get into the crevices of the of the gold things and just shading over all, all of the places that are going to be gold. In Cubite Darkness, I'm going to come back and clean up the armor real quick. Uh, this really doesn't take too much time. Uh, you can leave a little bit of the a little bit more than you think of the shaded color behind because the color doesn't get too different, but I don't like the like the matte coating that gets uh, the patchiness of the wash. So I'm gonna come back and clean up, just uh, pushing it back the, the wash into the recesses and cleaning up the places that are open. Here with Cavalite Green, I'm going to start edge highlighting the whole model. 
Uh, all of the edges on the model, I'm going to pick them up with this color and uh, I'm using a little bit of a drying retarder. This is Createx uh, drying retarder for airbrushing. And uh, I find it very useful for uh, making paint last wet for longer. Especially when you are edge highlighting, where you want the paint not to dry on the tip of your brush. Just uh, add a little couple drops of this into your palette and then uh, mix, it a, mix it a little bit with your paint and start uh, edge highlighting. Uh, here I'm using Cyberite Green and just picking up the sharpest places in the armor just to give them that very uh, hard um, extreme highlight just to make it pop a lot more. Next I'm going to use Eshin Grey and with this I'm going to do the same thing to the black just pick up the edges and places that are more exposed to light uh, it's a little bit different on the feet because uh, they don't have very well-defined edges. Um, places that are rounded, just try to pick the places that are um, most bright under your light. Just try to pick up those uh, hard edges and places that are most uh, reflective. And then here I'm using Dawnstone. And with this color I'm just picking up the places that are m the most uh, reflective on the feet and the most sharpest edges on the gun and places that are well defined with edges. Next with Runefang Steel I'm going to start edge highlighting the uh, silver as well. Pretty much the same thing, just pick up all of the edges. Uh, you can use any drying retarder that is liquid for art, any art uh, medium I guess. I've used uh, liquid text and I use this Createx uh, liquid drying retarder, they're pretty good. They're pretty much the same thing. Now the fun part, I'm going to use Cadian Flesh Tone and paint most of the flayed skin, just leaving the recesses on the previous color. Next I'm going to use Kislev Flesh and this color is gonna really bring out the color of the skin and it's gonna bring up some brightness and I'm using it in uh, 30 to 50% of the area, uh, leaving a little bit of the other two colors behind and Skin is really interesting to paint. Um, it has a lot of colors, that's why it's very difficult to paint in real life. And uh, I'm using five colors in total, including the wash, and that really makes it pop and look very good. This is my favorite part of painting Dark Eldar for some reason, it's just this uh, flayed skin areas. I'm using Flayed One Flesh to just uh, edge highlight the hardest places, the hardest edges on the skin, and that's it. After that's done, I'm going to use Ushapti Bone and color in the bone, uh, just the exposed parts and leaving a little bit of the shaded color behind. And then with Screaming Skull, I'm just going to pick up the very edges and the sharpest parts of the bone. Once that's done, I'm going to highlight the gold with Rune Lord Brass. Uh, this is going to be over most of the most exposed parts uh, on the top of the uh, gold, it's not really the edges and just leaving a little bit of the shaded color behind to in the shadows and stuff like that. Next I'm gonna come back with Runefang Steel and this is going to be uh, just an uh, edge highlight on the gold on the most uh, sharpest places on the gold to make it pop a little bit more. It's not really gold, it's brass. I'm, I keep calling it gold but it's, uh, it's a different color. Next with Crack Brown because I was forgetting about it, uh, this is going to be a edge highlight on all of the uh, Rhinox hide areas, just to bring up a little highlight on the places that are going to be brown. These are very small places, you can get away with not highlighting them, but I'm going to do it because uh, you're going to paint them and you might want to uh, highlight them. I'm, using, I'm doing the same with uh, Deathclaw Brown, just picking up the sharpest places and that's it. The last thing that we need to paint now is the eyes and for that I'm going to use Warpstone Glow and paint the whole eye socket uh, including the recesses. So make sure to paint the whole thing. And then I'm going to go with white and paint the center of the eyes as best as, po as possible to leave a little bit of the other color on the recesses. And to finish it up I'm going to use Mood Green and with this color I'm going to edge highlight the edges that are on the vicinity of the eye to make this little uh, glowing effect that looks pretty good. And this is the finished model. I have to say I had a lot of fun painting this model. Uh, the most, I mean, I think the most serious part is getting over with the edge highlighting, but 
I really think this is the way to go if you want it to look very good. Um, you can dry brush it and all if you want to make it faster. But in my opinion, the edge highlighting looks better. Uh, you might find different results, but this is my opinion. And uh, that's it. I really like the way the skin looks, uh, as I said before. And overall, Dark Eldar are pretty fun miniature miniatures to have in paint. They look pretty good. And I hope you have fun painting yours. So that's it. I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful. And if you really like it, please give me a like on this video. And subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future. Feel free to leave any questions that you have in the comments below. Follow me on Facebook. Check out my Patreon page. And that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing. But you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.